A very friendly hello to the audience. We are pleased and proud to have the opportunity to present BSH Home Appliance Company to you today. In our keynote, we want to give you an insight into why we choose to use Qt and want to tell you something about the software development of graphical user interfaces and the special challenges we face at BSH. But first, let's briefly introduce ourselves. My name is Daniel Dersmann. I am 42 years old and have been working for BSH for 10 years now. I started in 2011 as a software developer for graphical user interfaces, but moved to the dark side in 2014 when I took over as a team leader in the same department. Sadly, that's why I don't code much anymore today. In 2017, I was responsible for evaluating the framework for the next generation of graphical user interfaces for BSH. In the course of this evaluation, we decided to use Qt. I will talk a bit more about this later. Today, I'm also a product owner for two teams and involved in strategic topics in the area of software development and the collaboration between software development, design and usability departments at BSH. Well, that's all about me for now. Andy, please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Andrea Schachabauer. I'm 35 years old and since two years at BSH. In the last 10 years, I was working in the field of computer graphics, especially for mobile devices and in the context of augmented reality. Here at BSH, I'm working in one of Daniel's teams, which develops the foundation to work here with QT. Well, I'm not sure. But I think not all of you have heard of BSH as a company before. But where I'm very sure, however, is that you know at least one of our brands. But let's see. First, I would like to use this time to briefly introduce you to BSH as a company. I will talk briefly about our portfolio and the topic of innovations. After that, we will have a look at the evaluation I already mentioned. Then Andy will take over and go into more detail about what we are currently doing from a technical standpoint. Well, our goal is to become the market leader for consumer experiences in the home appliance industry. To achieve this, we put the consumer at the center of our actions. We offer innovative products and digital services that meet the special needs and circumstances of our consumers. Our central assumption here is that the expectations and needs of the consumers differ in the various regions and markets around the world. We want to establish a seamless relationship with each consumer that is tailored to their needs and accompany them throughout the entire life cycle of our products. I would just like to talk briefly about some of the numbers here. BSH remains the leading home appliance manufacturer in Europe in 2020 and achieved record sales of 30.9 billion euros despite a challenging start in 2020 and a highly competitive environment. At the end of 2020, BSH employed around 60,000 people worldwide and produces in 39 factories around the globe. Well, here's a short history lesson. BSH was founded in 1967 as a joint venture between Robert Bosch and Siemens. The following year saw strong national growth, followed by strong international growth from the 2000s. Since 2014, digital transformation has been one of the most important topics. In 2015, Siemens sold its shares in this joint venture to Robert Bosch and since then BSH has been subsidiary of the Bosch Group. As you can see, there are only few gray spots left on this map. BSH is represented globally in almost all regions. But let's look at the portfolio. You may not have known it, but we are a multi-brand group. And I hope I was right about that you know at least one of our brands. Our two main brands Bosch and Siemens are very well known worldwide and maybe you also know one of our local brands. Many of these brands allow themselves their own brand design at BSH and work with great enthusiasm to achieve a maximum of differentiation. This is one of the biggest challenges for us software developers. But we are not only a multi-brand group. We also have almost all household appliance categories represented in our portfolio. From fridges, washing machines and ovens to small household appliances like a vacuum cleaner robot. As you can imagine, this circumstance also poses some challenges for the software development. And as a software developer, you don't like to do things twice. HomeConnect is our ecosystem brand for connected devices. We have been selling connectable products since 2014. With the HomeConnect app, you can monitor and control connected appliances from almost all BSH brands and categories in just one app. To date, we have sold approximately 8 million connected devices. 
The next point in this presentation is the topic of innovations. As you can imagine, we at BSH have established a lot of innovations on the market over the decades. I'm going to pick just one innovation out of this lot. But against the backdrop of our common theme here, this one is certainly the most groundbreaking. I'm talking about the Cookit, which represents a new category of products at BSH and is also our first product to be powered by Qt. In 2017, we wanted to replace our old hardware and software platform with a new one. In the course of this replacement, we also started looking for a framework for our graphical user interfaces. After the experiences with the predecessor framework, we particularly focused on the following criteria. Of course, it was important to us that it can meet all the design and UX requirements. Scalability across different performance classes was also important, as well as shorter development cycles. We use C++ in our software stack and the corresponding tooling. So the new framework should integrate well with the existing solution. We also have a lot of really excellent C++ developers in our company, and we wanted to use this potential. The result was that Qt outperformed all competitors when measured against these criteria. One of these competitors was HTML5, for example, but there were also several embedded frameworks in the evaluation. We also decided to use Qt for our entry-level graphical user interfaces. This way, we can perfectly cover the challenges posed by our multi-brand and multi-category background with one software stack. And an essential part of this stack is Qt. Well, that was all I want to show today. Now I'll hand over to Andy, who will put the focus on the technical implementation. Thank you very much and see you on the summit. Thank you, Daniel. Today I would like to introduce you two software components here at BSH that we use in order to reduce implementation efforts for our developers. So the first one I would like to talk about is called GUI Framework. And the goal is to reduce implementation of effort for common software components. Before using Qt, a lot of other toolkits were used, and it was hard to implement common parts. Since we introduced Qt as toolkit of choice, it's the perfect opportunity to streamline all our UI development. Projects need to start from scratch anyhow, so it's easy for, for them to integrate the GUI framework. And it also has the benefit for the developers that if they switch to another project, they are already familiar with the foundation of the appliance, so it's easy for them to pick up and continue right away. So let's have a look at view management, one of the components of the GUI framework. As you can see here, our appliances can have a quite complex view hierarchy. And loading all these views at application launch is too costly, both in RAM usage and also time-wise. The boot time would just be too high. So if you think about a coffee machine, you want to start brewing the coffee fast. You don't want to wait for the UI that you get to the point where you can finally click the start button. So that's why we load views on demand, which means we're entering the view and we try to delete them as soon as it's not necessary anymore. But we can also define relationships between them to keep logical groups in memory to assure fast view switches between them. So let's have a look at a practical example here. Almost all our appliances have a settings menu. And this settings menu, for example, is a logical group. So when you navigate to a view of the settings, it will be loaded the first time. But when you navigate away from that view, for example, to a child view, it will not be deleted. We cache it to allow fast view switches, but also to preserve the UI state. And this is handy for the developers because they don't need to care about UI preserving the UI state. It's just there because the view is still in memory. So all scroll positions are still there. And when you're leaving a group, for example, to the main menu or to another feature, then this entire group is deleted. And this is also important for Home Connect. As you already heard, Home Connect is the appliance companion application that runs on your smartphone. And with that smartphone application, you can fully control the appliance, which means you can trigger almost any kind of view transition. So a solid view management is really important here. So let's have a look on two QML or Qt functionalities that we are using to achieve this. One of them is the QML stack view. It's used for the view transition playback. 
the individual views define the transition. And this allows us great flexibility because each view can fine tune the transition. But before the view transition is starting, we assign the transition of the view to the corresponding stack view property. And then we trigger the view switch. So every view gets exactly that transition that it wants. The other part that is important here is the QML C++ communication. As I already mentioned, the stack view is handling the view transitions very well. But the logic, when to delete and when to load views, that is C++ territory. You don't want to have JavaScript here. You want to have a compiler and a strongly typed language to avoid simple mistakes right from the beginning. Also, the STL with all its algorithms and functionality like std chrono that are field proven and robust is a great help here. So the second topic I would like to talk about is the design framework. It helps us to reduce implementation efforts for our actual user interfaces. New product lines are already developed with a common design in mind. So it's easy to split the UI into its atoms and then reuse these atoms across all our appliances. Product teams are implementing then these atoms and share them between each other. So you might think this is nothing new and you are right, but applying this pattern at a company the size of BSH is quite challenging. But QML is great here and allows us to clearly define those small atoms. And also the combination of the small atoms to bigger molecules is possible. So we can share quite complex UI elements across different products. Unfortunately, I cannot show you any practical example here because all the products that are using this approach right now are still under active development, which makes them confidential. But I hope I could give you a brief overview of some of the initiatives here at BSH that we took to bring a smile on the face of our developers and wish you a pleasant remaining Qt World Summit.